Welcome, I'm Nan Jokerst, and this is our in-depth video about deposition of thin films using plasma-enhanced chemical vapor deposition, also called PECVD for short. PECVD is a variation on chemical vapor deposition, and what makes PECVD different is that it uses a plasma for deposition. Silicon dioxide and silicon nitride are two thin film dielectric insulating materials that are very commonly used in nano and micro technology devices and systems, and these are deposited by CVD. So that's why many fabrication facilities have a dedicated PECVD system. In contrast to chemical vapor deposition, PECVD uses a plasma rather than high temperature as the source of activation energy. That means the deposition can occur at much lower temperatures since the plasma provides the energy instead of using the thermal energy. This means that we don't need high temperature furnaces and also we can use substrates and samples that cannot tolerate higher temperatures. So let's take a look at PECVD and at the chamber and how it works. This is a schematic of a PECVD chamber. Let's take a look inside. Inside the chamber, there's a flat place for our substrate called a platen, which can be heated. Our substrate is placed on the platen. At the top of the chamber, there's an input for the gas that forms the plasma that chemically reacts on the substrate's surface to deposit the thin film. In addition to the source gas, there's a high voltage radio frequency also called RF, electrical connection to an electrode at the top of the chamber. This RF connection provides the power needed to create the plasma. PECVD uses energized atoms, this plasma, to perform a chemical reaction on the substrate surface that deposits a thin film onto the substrate. You've probably heard of the states of matter that we commonly experience, which are solid, liquid, and gas. Plasma is a fourth state of matter, but don't let that scare you. We use plasmas in our everyday lives. One common use of plasma is in the fluorescent light bulbs. In this case, the plasma in a light bulb is used to generate light. In our PECVD system, we use a mixture of gases to form the plasma that deposits the film onto the substrate. So to use PECVD, first we pump the chamber down with a mechanical pump to approximately one millitor to provide a clean environment for our deposition. Next, the source gas or gases flow into the chamber. Different gases are used to deposit different materials, such as the silicon dioxide and silicon nitride I mentioned earlier. The pressure and gas flow are allowed to stabilize, and the pressure can vary from the millitor range up to a few tor. This stabilization typically takes less than one minute. Then, the high voltage is applied to the chamber electrode to ionize the gas molecules. This ionization process makes the molecules of the source gas chemically reactive, and then these molecules form a thin layer of material on our substrate. I should say that a lot of chemistry research went into identifying the correct source gases for these desired deposited films. The growth rate of the film is constant, so a desired thickness can be achieved by running the process for a certain amount of time. To stop the thin film deposition, we turn off the RF voltage and stop the gas flow. When the thin film deposition is complete, we pump the chamber down again to remove all of the gases and byproducts of the deposition process. Then, we fill the chamber with nitrogen, or we say the chamber is vented, until the pressure in the chamber is the same as the pressure in the room, which is atmospheric pressure. Then, we can open the chamber and remove the sample. Our last process is to clean the chamber after we're done with our deposition so that it's ready for the next user. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Hello, I'm Nan Jokers at Duke University. 
and I'll be joined in this video by my PhD student, Auditi. Hey, in this video, Auditi will demonstrate the operation of the Plasma Enhanced Chemical Vapor Deposition System, or as we say, PECVD. This fabrication tool is located inside the clean room, so let's get into our clean room suits and take a look at the PECVD system. This is the PECVD system located within the clean room at Duke University. The red dome is the deposition chamber. This is where the process occurs. On the side of the system, there is stainless steel tubing. These tubes carry the gases to the deposition chamber through the top of the chamber. There are many computer-controlled valves that control the exact flow of these gases. Each material deposited uses specific gases in controlled amounts, which is specified in the recipe for each material. These recipes are stored in the computer. The RF, or radio frequency, electrical power also connects here at the top of the chamber. The RF power causes the plasma to form during the deposition process. The deposition chamber is kept under vacuum when not in use. This keeps the inside of the chamber clean. Since the chamber is under vacuum right now, my first step is to vent the chamber. This means that we flow nitrogen into the chamber until it reaches atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure in the room. And then, the red chamber dome will automatically lift and rotate to the side. We are now ready to load our substrate into the PCVD deposition chamber. We will be using a silicon wafer for our substrate. The wafer will be placed on the platen, which is a heated platform. In this particular system, the platen is maintained at 250 degrees Celsius. Heating the sample assists in the material deposition process. However, this temperature is much lower than non-plasma CVD processes which use temperatures at 600 degrees Celsius to 900 degrees Celsius, or even higher. In non-plasma CVD processes, the activation energy required to initiate material deposition comes in the form of heat. In PCVD, the plasma provides necessary activation energy, so high temperatures are not necessary. We carefully place the sample onto the platen. With the sample in place, we can now close the chamber. We use the computer to do this. Now, we can start the pump down sequence. The system will be rough pumped to a pressure of about 1 times 10 raised to minus 3 torr. When we use the PECVD, we typically use standard recipes for deposition of thin films. We choose the recipe for the material that we want to deposit on the computer as well as the desired deposition time. The deposition time determines thickness of the deposited material. Typical thicknesses of PECVD films range from tens of nanometers to a few microns. Each process is calibrated so that the deposition rate for each material is known. For example, when we deposit silicon dioxide in this system, the deposition rate is 35 nanometers per minute. After a few minutes of pumping, we reach our desired chamber pressure. Now, we will select the material we want to deposit and enter the desired deposition time into the computer. We are now ready to begin the PCVD deposition by clicking Start on the computer. When we click Start, the gases begin to flow and the pressure rises to a preset value defined in the recipe. When the pressure stabilizes, the RF power is turned on, which starts the plasma. PCVD deposition of silicon dioxide has now begun and we can see faint glow of the plasma inside the chamber through this viewing window. After the desired deposition time is complete, the RF power and gas flow will be stopped by the computer. The system will then go through a few cycles where the remaining gases are pumped out and clean nitrogen gas is pumped in to remove the reaction gases. Next, we select vent on the computer to vent the chamber to atmospheric pressure and nitrogen gas flows into the chamber and the red dome automatically lifts. We can now remove our sample. After we remove our sample, we close the chamber and pump down. Remember, the chamber stays pumped down when not in use to keep it clean. After pumping the chamber down, there is one final step. We want to leave the system as clean as possible for the next user. So, we run a special recipe called an etch pack. 
This process creates a plasma in the system that does not deposit material, but rather cleans the chamber. This plasma removes or etches any material we may have just deposited on the walls and the base of the chamber. This cleans the system because we don't know what material the next user will deposit and our remaining deposited material may contaminate their thin film. Thank you for watching our demonstration of the PCVD deposition system.